It's been an interesting day, to say the least. When you consider the fact that we've had really high winds, it made it tough to cast, regardless if you were fishing nymphs or dries. We managed to get some fish. Success did not elude us, and that's what's really important. Surprisingly, more of the activity was on the surface than it was subsurface earlier. But when you consider what we call this, fishing, we had a good day. So I'll start downstream of you okay. if you start here. I'll yep. give you like two or three, I'll go down about 30 yards. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey guys, John Kolb with the Raining Angler. I have Dave Rethrock and Scott Major from PA Woods and Water. We are fishing Penn's Creek today. We're gonna try to catch some fish. So, anything you wanna say? Nope, we're just gonna go at it. We're gonna have a fun day. That's right. We're gonna have a fun day, stay tuned. Any so, fish is a big fish. Yep, and I'm gonna be behind the camera mostly filming these guys, so it should be a good day. Okay, I've made a decision that I'm gonna start out with a Betus nymph, a little blueing olive nymph. Single fly here. And uh, we'll see what happens. So why are you doing uh, one fly versus two? Right now it's only because I've got it rigged up. I want to get a fly in the water and uh, see what happens. Scott, you are using stone flies. I'm using the golden stone. Right there. Very, very similar to a, a lively legs golden stone. That's more of an attractor golden stone because it's so bright. Then we got a double trouble here, right there. And then we got the blue pertagon. <laughs> and the reason I picked these three is several days I was here, did well, told these guys about it. They wanted to come back and fish this section again. So these were proven patterns for me several days ago. So let's see if they're going to repeat themselves today. Okay, guys. I got a pretty decent sized split shot on on this water closer to us. It may be too much, so we'll see. Were you catching them on the swing yesterday or? I caught several on the swing, not most of them. Most of them were in the, sometimes it was as soon as the fly hit the water, they would pounce right on it. Although well, we can say maybe the fish just aren't feeding yet. There he is. <laughs> he hit and came into me. Dave. Haven't seen him yet. He's on the blue Pertagon. On the blue Pertagon. Uh, just see what he's doing. See if he's, he's fighting weird. That's why I'm thinking maybe he's foul hooked. I don't know. Hate that to be the case for, hate that to be the case for the first fish of the day. Which he is, yeah. Come on fish, go ahead John. There you go, Johnny got him. So we don't know which, really which one he was going for, but he got hooked on the blue Pertagon. A little guy, about 10, 11. One, two, three. Okie dokie. I think I need more shot.
Probably about a 15 inch. I don't know this one yet. I don't know. We got one here. Got, I'm using 4X tippet, so I should be good as far as strength for the tippet. But this, once they get this kind of current and they go with it, they know how to use that current to fight. Sometimes you just got to play them carefully, let them play out a little. Um, you can't just horse them. So one thing I'm noticing with you is you're, you're really taking your time with the fish. And you're not forcing them or... Right, he's on the golden stone. Oh no, I don't, I don't, it's, like I said, it all, it's all kind of dictated by how deep the water, how fast the water, what size tippet you have on. So, um, I, I really just can't horse this guy in. I'm gonna try a little bit. He's on the golden stone though. I love, ideally I love to get the fish even with me or up to me get his head above water and then drag him across the surface. That's ideally. But I don't know if it's gonna work out that way. It looks like it might. Yes. Oh, baby. 15, 16. There's that golden stone right in his mouth. One, two, three. Gee. Okay. Yeah, like I said, whether it's working as a stonefly pattern or just an attractor pattern because of how bright it is, we don't know. I'm not, I don't know how I would work with that camera. I was gonna say, if you just wanna use my rod and I would use get the camera, but I don't know. I, I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna try that, I don't care about the rod. I care more, you yeah. probably care more about the camera than I do about the rod. <laughs> Even though it'll be over my neck. There it is, okay, I got it. Oh, oh there he goes. There he goes. I got that. <laughs> got I mean, that. I've never, I've fished the, I'm always tight lining with the cider. Yeah. I'm amazed at how well you can see your line. Yeah, because you, your whole line is your indicator. Instead of, is, okay, he's got a good one on, got a good one on. Yeah. <laughs> yes, John's got a good one on. How about if I go down? I'll net the fish for you. Here we are, we're down here. Okay. You bring them to me. I'm not gonna chip. Bring them up, bring them up, bring them up. Oh, there you go. He's hooked on the side a little. But that's it, that's good. 14 incher. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Uh -oh. Good fish. I think he broke off the rest, the other, my, my other rigs, my other flies. Nice. Beautiful. 13, 14. Yes. This is a, 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 a BB, a BB split shot right here. And it was about 11 inches above. And then to get it, I, this actually slid up. I'm going to slide this down to about seven inches above my top fly. That will help my rig just a little bit sink a little bit deeper. Um, whenever, before I ever change out a split shot, I always micro adjust the split shot. If you want your rig to float a little higher, move your split shot up. If you want it to go a little bit lower, move your split shot down. If those adjustments don't work, then you have to switch out for a different size shot. But always try to micro adjust it first because sometimes that's all you need is a micro adjustment rather than switching out everything. Oh, that wind just blew that. <laughs> that. I don't know. I think that's not going to be the best drift. I got to keep, I got to line drive this and keep it low. Like that. There you go. Actually, I'm going to probably put a stone on the bottom and then maybe uh, a nondescript brown, dark brown on the top.
that's a 20 inch brown in here. Maybe a 22. That's not good. Uh, uh, whatever. Oh, look, I'm trying to shut my camera off. <laughs> it's my last fly, too, on the whole rig. Uh, well, 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 I think I got lucky. That's, I don't know if that's it, though. Cause I got, I see it's on the, it's on the bottom side. I'm gonna go actually go over and get it. So you go up and Dave. So we are fishing along here, doing okay. Scott's caught five or six. Dave's landed a really nice brook trout. And I caught a couple, actually lost one and then landed a decent 16 inch brown or so. Getting into some skinnier water. We'll see if there's more fish hanging out in here and hopefully we can catch some more. There's a fish. It was Scott. Hey, there you go. Good one. Yes. Woo. Man, nice one. Beautiful brown trout. He took the big stone fly. I'm gonna get video with my GoPro so I can get this guy right back in the water. But he is every bit of 17 inches. Oh, we got, we got 16 and a half inches. There he goes. Going up, up he's, going. he's on the square rock. Huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, these are dark. Holy mac! Yeah. That's the darkest Hendrickson I think I've ever seen. It's not a black quill, is it? Remember, because it has black quill. Yeah, I know, but black quills I think have two tails. They were black. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, they were black. Well, that, that's why I was really looking at that yeah. bug to see whether or not yeah. it was. But I, I think left the Flibia. Well, I'm not sure. They have three tails. All right, so we've been, the past three hours, we have not caught a fish. Well, Dave hooked into one and lost it. But fishing's been super slow, came further up the hole, and we're seeing all kinds of Hendrickson's coming off, some stoneflies, some blue winged olives. So Dave switched to his dry fly setup. Scott's using dry flies. And hopefully we can hook into some fish here. See them on the water. Crazy. No, well, no, not really. I think this is probably better. Mm. What'd you say? Dave just hooked one. He said it was a Hendrickson with a trailing shuck. Shuck is the ticket. They want that shuck. They won't touch it unless it has a shuck on it. There you go. Come on down. Come on down. 
There you go. Got him. There we go. No!